but to see once before and actually um, I've never heard of it before. So I something not in chat. I don't have his bio. But I go I believe I am introducing Dr. ABC. Yeah, something not anybody know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I get to introduce Dr. ABC, and I think uh, um, I got to see him once, and I found him to be this amazing speaker and very engaging. Um, I want to see how he does online, but I think he'll be just as engaging online as he was in person. So thank you, um, Dr. ABC. Thank you for being here, and thank you for allowing me um, to sort of be here and spend a bit of time. I'm working at the same time. Goodbye. Thank you, Roslyn. It was a pleasure having you. That message was so important. Yes, we need to center our elders. We need to support our elder community because there's so much knowledge to be learned from you. So thank you for that message. It was super important. Um, I do have Dr. ABC's bio, and I would love to read it out before he begins, if that's okay. Um, let me get into it. This is a bio bio. Okay, this is someone who's, who's been around, who's got the accolades. <laughs> Dr. Andrew B. Campbell, or Dr. ABC, is a graduate of the University of Toronto with a PhD in Educational Leadership, Policy, and Diversity. He is presently a faculty member at the Masters of Teaching program at the University of Toronto and an assistant professor at Queen's University. He is an Ontario certified teacher and has been an educator for over 25 years in Jamaica, the Bahamas, and Canada. He has authored two books. The first is Teachable Moments with Dr. ABC, A Spoonful for the Journey, published in 2015, and The Invisible Student in the Jamaican Classroom, published in 2018. His research and teaching focuses on issues of equity, diversity, inclusion, leadership, LGBTQ plus issues, and teacher performance evaluation. He has presented at numerous, and numerous is the, is the word here, peer-reviewed academic conferences and has delivered many presentations as a motivational speaker, keynote, and workshop facilitator. He loves people, fashion, emphasis on the fashion, <laughs> and traveling. So without further ado, Dr. ABC, the floor is yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me, and thanks for that wonderful introduction. Um, it's funny, before I get into anything, it's funny, it's really funny, uh, the energy you could get from people. It's really funny, and I speak about this as not to do with the topic, but it's very important. I speak about this all the time, and I wish more of us would understand that. You know, I'm sitting here and, and enjoying the program, and then I saw Brenda, and I had goosebumps. And then Brenda's song, her first song, which is I love, but the second song, Starlight. Just want you to know, Brenda, I need that song ASAP. So wherever I can get it, I need it. I need that song. Beautiful. And that's the energy you brought in the room. And I, it, it, it was beautiful. And then I honestly have to come, make a confession that I didn't fit the face. I didn't match the face with the name Rosalind. And then when Rosalind came on the screen, I said, oh my God, that's Rosalind. And the joy in seeing people, the joy in connecting people, the joy. And so I just had to underline that. And I hope we continue getting that joy when we see powerful faces in the room, powerful people in the room, not to, not to be scared of powerful voices, but to, to, but to, but to be, but, but to be excited about powerful voices. And thank you for that, um, Rosin. And thank you for making a claim for black trans women and aging black trans women because funny enough it's in my presentation and so i'm going to mention some of that later on so thank you everyone and for those joining via live facebook and other places i want to say welcome to everyone in the space of course i'm very excited to to to, pre to present this keynote under the theme breaking the silence and you know, May the 17th, which is going to be Sunday, is a very special day because until May the 17th, 1990, homosexuality was considered a mental disorder. And when I did that, I think about, I thought about that and I thought about where was, you know, where I was at, in 1990. I was a young teenage black little boy in, 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 in Jamaica. And it's funny, the theme is breaking the silence because at that time in the 1990s, of course I was scared. Of course I was hurting. Of course I was in pain. And of course I had to remain silent. I couldn't even tell my mom where it hurt. 
I couldn't even tell my mom, you know, what, what I was, what was hurting because I didn't even understand what was hurting. And that, and then when I kind of got to understand what was hurting, then I had to be silent about what was hurting because if I shared what was hurting, then it would have been, it would have been, I mean, dangerous for me. So, you know, I didn't want to get into traumas yet, but that just, I just want you to understand what that, when, when people talk about trauma, it's not just a pop word. It's not just a loose word some of us are using. It's a real word. Think about a young person. I was maybe about 14, 15, 16 that time and having something, having a dirty secret. The dirty secret is that I felt different. And then I had no one to say, so I have to keep silent. And so it's important for us to understand the value of breaking that silence today. And why is this theme of breaking the silence is so important because many of us have had to be silent. We have grown, we have been taught how to be silent because, because speaking, speaking is dangerous. So I want us to establish that, especially since I'm speaking to my two SLGBTQ black and especially black and brown and indigenous people. We understand that. So I want to read the, the, from the website what was said. And I just want to, because I want to underline and anchor what I'm going to say in that. In our families, in our social circles at work, in our sports club, for many of us, our sexualities, gender identities, or sex characteristics must be hidden. We wonder I want that, but you to underline that word. We wander through most of our lives with the stigma of feeling ashamed of who we are. This year, 2020, we break the silence. We examine the many ways we can and must tell our stories, claim space, establish our voice, and ensure we are heard. We break the silence and tell our truth and tell our stories. And I smile when I hear the word tell our truth, tell our story, because People want you to tell your truth and tell your stories, but a lot of our truths disrupt and, dis and disrupt the neighborhood. Bob Marley has a song that I love that says, I want to disturb my neighbor. It's a beautiful song. And one of the lines says, I want to disturb my neighbor. Because you know what? We don't, want, we, don't, we don't want to tell our truth. So when we tell our truths, when I tell my truth, I can tell you, even today, I'm on Facebook Live. I guarantee when I'm finished telling my truth, I would have disturbed a neighbor or two. And I'm thankful that I'm at the place where I'm okay disturbing my neighbor. But I'm here not to speak of myself, but to speak of the many other black and brown bodies who cannot, don't have the power to, to, to disturb their neighbor. And they have to remain silent. So we want to talk about that. So why do we keep silent? We keep silent because of our families and because of our fear. We keep silent because of our friends. Don't be so, don't be so effeminate. Don't be so loud. You know, don't make everybody see us. Don't be so noticed. I have had friends who have loved me, friends who love me. And in the way they show love to me was to police my actions. And you don't put your hand there. Don't wear that shirt. Don't wear that hat. Don't wear that. Don't wear that. And that was love. Imagine that is love policing me because in fact they are trying to protect me i'm feeling so emotional but it's too early for that so let me i'm doing what brenda taught me i'm i'm breathing in brenda thank you brenda i am taking breaths because i realize you know I, I you prepare a presentation like this and you present it for days i prepared this i don't come here without i prepare and then when you are presenting the emotions come and i think I'm so happy that I've learned from you, Brenda, and other First Nations persons. Even when I'm presenting, it's okay for me to pause and take a breath. And so I just want to take that breath right now. Thank you. And so we have to remain silent in our religion, in our workplaces, in our customs, in our expectations. And we keep silent because of shame. Many of us, we are born in shame. We are taught how to be ashamed of ourselves. We are, we, when the first step, some other thing, the first thing we learn about us is how to be ashamed. You're, you're ashamed because you have a dirty secret. You're ashamed because you're not normal. You're ashamed because you're not like the red, the other girls. You're ashamed because you're not like the red, the other boys. And so we are taught that. And then we have a problem in our community now, especially in our black community and brown community, when our kids have such, such low self-esteem. And we wonder why they are so silent. They don't speak up 
because we have taught them how to shut their mouth, to be quiet, and to be in shame. So, who benefits from our silence? I can tell you right now, it's not me and it's not you. And that's why we're going to talk about how do we break the silence? Because we don't benefit from that silence. We don't benefit from that silence. And I see the chat box is popping and going. And feel free to have your comment because it's a conversation. Don't ever feel like you can't say something back. I am not monitoring the chat box, whether on Facebook or on, on the Zoom. They are qualified, ama amazing people. Yoshi, Allegra, Navid, Joy, who is monitoring the chat box. So don't feel afraid to say what you want to say. Get it out. Type it out. You won't be distracting me. Don't worry. We're having a conversation. Just that I have the mic. You know what I'm saying? So we're scared of our own shadow. So when you ask why people are so silent, we're scared of our own shadow. You know what I'm saying? We, and the shame is a stain on all of us. Many of us refuse to even walk in, con we, we can't walk in constant shame because the shame is taught. Just like our racism is taught, Islamophobia is taught, the shame is taught. And so I want to ask all of our persons who are LGBTQ and two-spirited today and all those persons who are, who are not LGBTQ, two-spirited, but you are listening to me and you have also walked in shame because of other reasons, because of your color, because of your size, because of whatever, sizeism, ageism. I want you to understand that there's many opportunities for you to unlearn. And I want you to be, en to be engaging in unlearning. I want you to be engaging in unlearning. So, you know, we're in Peel region. We are broadcasting live from Peel region, from Moyo. Moyo, wonderful organization. It's not right here in the middle of black and brown community. And, in, you know, LGBTQ issues are layered. And then you're going to pour black and brown on that. And it's another layer. You pour Muslim on that. It's another layer. You pour immigrant. On that, it's a whole nother layer. You pour a strong accent on that, it's another layer. And you ask some of us why, or some ask people why they are either having mental concerns or mental health issues, or you ask people like me why I'm so protective of, of self-care. Why do I talk about self-care that much? If it wasn't for self-care, and, and Brenda, don't think I wasn't listening to you, Brenda. Don't think I wasn't listening when you talk about the interior, the exterior, and the higher. When you said the interior, I said, thank you. I can pull on myself. When you said the exterior, I said, we need people. And when you said the higher, I have a source I have to go to. And it's a wonder some of us, we are not dead today. It's a wonder some of us, we are not broken and we are just not destroyed because we have to constantly, all those layers and intersectionality. And don't pretend that you, we, we, we can be silent because I don't have the privilege to be silent. And many of you don't have the privilege because silence can be a privilege and silence is a privilege in some spaces. Many trans women don't have the privilege to be silent. Once you step out the door, they see you. Men of our more effeminate men don't have the privilege to be silent. And that's why even in the LGBT communities, effeminate men are demonized. You don't think I was going to go there today? I am ready. I've been preparing for this for weeks. I am touching everything. If you didn't get touched, it's because you wasn't even in the room. Don't think. Don't think I'm going to remain silent because a lot of effeminate, more effeminate LGBTQ people are, are, are demonized by the black and brown LGBTQ men because being silent and being in the closet and being on the DL is a thing. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's not a thing because there are many young boys and girls when I was in that age willing and, and, and thirsty to find someone that looked like me, that was gay and that I could say I could be that one day. I could be that person. And if you ask me why I've chosen to be so visible, no, it's not because of money. I have a job. Yes, I do. It's not because I just want to make a show of myself. I have already seen. I'm a showpiece, unapologetically. And I used to struggle with that because some people used to tell me to be less seen, less seen, and dim my light. I am a showpiece, honey. You have, an you have a problem with that? That's your business. 
But I can tell you, it took years for me to be, to be that. I was afraid of my own shadow. I was afraid of my own shadow. You see this voice I talk with? When I was growing up, I used to be afraid of my voice. It was so girly. Silent. Silent. So I am here to encourage everyone to be silent. And why do I talk about the black and brown community? Because as Martin Luther King says, and some of you are on Facebook, I wish you was in the room so you could see the slides. But I'll post some of them later on. Martin Luther King says, Martin Luther King says, no one is free until we are all free. Because I am I am on all the on the all the Facebook groups, you know. I am on the Black Toronto and the Black this and the Black that and the Black everything. And everybody's ready for a march. And everybody's ready for a resistance until the person standing beside them is either gay or trans. And then we are so we ain't so black anymore. Martin Luther says, no one is free until we are all free. LGBTQ lives, they matter. They matter, people. So silence can be dangerous. I talk about that already. Silence can be dangerous. We are born into silence. For, some of you are forced into silence because of your religion and because of customs and because of traditions. You know, I am single. I've never been married. And I don't talk a lot. Of, I, I share a lot of my pieces of myself, especially in my new Facebook um, Spoonful um, live um, episodes. But there's so much more to share because I've lived long. I've lived long. <laughs> and some of us, because we are gay, we have lived two lives. We are almost near to a cat. Cat has nine. But some of us, we have, we have a couple lives. So when you hear, I have a lot to share. How does Angie have so much to share? Because, honey, I have lived a couple lives already. We are silent because of our earth. Silent because it was dangerous. Silent because we are silent in not to live in. We're police to protect ourselves. I talked to you. I said to you, I was, I've never been married. When I was 22 or 23, I was asked in church if I see anyone that I like, if there's any woman in church that I see. Can I tell you what I did? I said no first. But because I had to say yes, because that's what you have to do in church, I said yes. And I called a church sister's name that I like. She's my friend. I liked her. But not for sex. Not for relationship. I liked her. So I choose a name. Because I have to choose a name. If I don't choose a name, Jesus coming quick. So let me choose a name. You all know when you ask me to be the keynote what you're going to get. So let's, let's just sit and put our seatbelt on, honey. Because we have a couple more minutes to go for this. Because I don't get this opportunity all the time. And I ain't going to waste it. There's a young boy somewhere on Facebook listening to me. I ain't cheating him today to please anybody. There's a young girl somewhere. A little trans girl somewhere. A little trans boy somewhere. Who is going to find this video. And I ain't going to cheat him to please you. And I need a second moment of silence. Thank you, Brenda, for teaching me how to breathe. Thank you, First Nations people. I learn how to breathe by being in workshops and listening to First Nations people. I thought it was a joke. Breathing was natural for me. Hey, you breathe in, breathe out until I understand the power of taking a breath. So thank you for that. I practice that. Very, very intentional. So we are silent. I'm wearing a pin today. For those who may not notice, I'm wearing my fabulous LGBTQ loud pin. You can see it a little bit dramatic as usual. But I'm also wearing my Jamaican pin. I'm from Jamaica. I'm wearing that Jamaican pin because there are many Jamaican people, boys and girls, men and women, listening to me. You have to remain silent. I'm going to surprise you. There are many Jamaican people who I know would be on my live today, but they won't be on the live because they know if they be on the live, somebody will say, oh, you listen to gay stuff. But that's okay. I'm going to save it and you can listen to it when you are ready. So we have to remain silent in our classrooms, in our churches, in our workplaces. We have to remain silent even in our bedrooms. And I, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the, your screen, you can see the map of the world and where same-sex intercourse is illegal. Same-sex relationships are still illegal. Penalty by death. Life imprisonment. 
when I'm thinking about my vacation, I like to take, I've worked hard and I promise myself I'm going to take three vacations per year. I have worked hard for that and I want to do that until I can no longer do that. And every time I think where I'm going, I have to do my little investigation. Am I, am I allowed to be fabulous in this country? Because I'm not going to go anywhere on vacation, then they put me in jail. So we remain silent. I want you to think about a pandemic. We're in a pandemic. We're talking about homelessness. So we're talking about um, um, food. We're talking about a lot of stuff affecting learning. School boards are in a mess right now, trying to teach, trying to engage. But I want you to think about, I, I heard on the radio some program about the number of um, calls the police are getting for domestic violence. I'm sure you heard it. And they said lawyers are getting more and more phone calls for divorce. But I want you to think about the house right now at 11, 12, right now, a little boy or a little girl or a little in, um, two-spirited intersex or a little person who don't know what, even how to identify themselves. And I keep saying, I hope you understand, I'm very intentional when I said boy or girl and inter, uh, because, I, because I, when I used to say young, because we are labeled so strong, I'm not using the word non-binary or intersex for those kids because we place title on them. So I know there may be LGBTQ persons listening to me that says, Andrew, you know, you keep saying boy or girl. When I come to that age, I, I'm very intentional with that because these people are not, these are the kids that don't even discover who they are. They can't even be proud to say I'm non-binary or I'm intersex or I'm just they or I'm them. They're not reached there yet. They're still under certain titles and labels forced upon them. So I want you to understand right here in the pandemic, they are being affected because they are trapped in homes and houses with homophobic siblings and parents and caregivers. You know, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of having a problem with that word caregiver lately. I'm kind of having a problem with the word caregiver. I'm no dictionary, but I'm having a problem with the word caregiver because can you imagine a child trapped in a house with a person who's a caregiver? Hmm. Not no caregiver. Some people are the devil. You are no caregiver. You are the devil. You're evil. That's what you are. When you are traumatizing and terrorizing and abusing. And I said it, I'm sure you all saw on Facebook the other day, the video of the little boy and, and a little girl dancing. Many of you have seen it. They're dancing and the music come on and he's doing his thing. Remind me of myself, honey. Doing his thing. And his parent, whoever came in and gave him one slap in the face. And I heard, because I didn't, I didn't read it. I heard it's a big apology. Of course there's going to be a big apology. We caught you. So you apologize. But how many times have you slapped that little boy before? Because I want you to realize my friend unpacked it with me. One of my best friends, he unpacked it with me. He said to me, and you notice a child didn't even cry. And I said, because he has been slapped before. He's used to that. Trauma. So let's get closer home. Let's get closer home, right? The trauma. On my screen, you talk about the violent homophobic incidents in common in high schools, but few students report it. That's in the news. It said one in four GTA high school students subjected to hateful, homophobic, transphobic comments, they said. And they said they don't report it. Why they don't report it? Because they are scared. I am, I am single. I'm putting a pl plug for myself. Yes, I am. I'm single and looking to date. And I'm still, in 2020, I still meet adult, grown men who, don't, who, who would like to date me, but they would like to date me if we don't smile in public. The work I have put in freeing myself from mental slavery and then in order to fall in love I need you to pull me back in the closet. I'm going to tell you right now. I have broken the silence. Keep your gifts. Keep your love. Keep your smile. Keep all the other good stuff that people do when they are in love. Because I've chosen, chosen me. And we have to learn to choose ourselves when we break the silence. Another script. Another flat. Another a point. The trans community needs more than awareness. Rosin talk about that. We need to feel safe. The trans community. This article there. Beautiful article. Another one. I want to show you. The violence against transgender community in 2009. It's, it's deafening. It's deafening. Especially trans women of color. 
And I don't want to trigger anybody or upset anybody. And I'm sure there's enough sources and enough resources online if you want somebody to talk to. But we see that picture there on my screen is pictures of murdered trans women. So we need to break the silence and ask what's going on. What's going on? What's going on when we're killing all our black and brown and our other indigenous two-spirited trans? What, what's going on? What's going on? We have, it's layered. It's layered. All of us don't experience LGBTQ lives the same way. Some of us have many privilege. White privilege still dominates in every circle, in every area. So let me hasten on to ask, who benefits from our silence? And you know who benefits from our silence? Not you and I, but the people who don't really care about us. Those are the ones who benefit from our silence. You know, we talk about such things like allyship. I'm going to speak to some of you right now who are allies. Rosin also mentioned about calling workplaces and calling on people to do more. A lot of people are doing all these little programs. You're eyeing a trans woman for two months contract. You're eyeing a gay person for four months contract. You're eyeing a, a trans man. And you're eyeing a, a, a non-binary person. And you're hiring that person because you want to check a box. Yay! We hired somebody for a two months contract. I don't, you, listen, it's a, let me be very clear. A two months contract is a start because many people weren't there before. It's a start, but you're stuck there. Too much stuck in, too much stuck in. It's my word, too much stuck in. You are stuck there. We want to give our L2S, LGBTQ, non-binary people space to, to thrive. That's the word. I want you to write that word down. I want you to write that word down. Thrive. You need to give opportunities to 2s lgbtq people spaces to thrive as a school teacher when i came to work in the toronto district school board and i realized i could be an amazing teacher and still show my true colors i could wear this jacket you see my stripe this morning you all love my jacket i could wear this jacket you see my j oh you didn't see the jacket oh you didn't see the entire thing Oh, you know, I'm all about my clothes sometimes. You see that? You see all of this? You see my top, my, my, my thing says limit, edition limited, whatever. It's a French. You all can pronounce it. I don't speak French. You all could give me French pronunciation, right? When I found I could do that, I could turn up in a classroom as my whole self. I was an amazing teacher before. I think I got a, I think I became a better teacher. I think I became a better, I know I became a better teacher. And I think about all the teachers all over the world who are, who are giving the best to children and can't give the best to themselves. Because your happiness, your happiness depends on my silence. Your happiness depends on my silence. So I did a workshop a couple years, couple, um, sorry, years, couple months ago. And I asked twice and I asked, you know, LGBTQ young people, you know, our people on our own, what would you fear would happen? If you brought your whole identity to work, what you feared would happen? And people said to me, rejection was a big one. Judge, being disrespected, discriminated, oppressed, pigeonholed, and murdered. So this is why people remain silent. And the silence that we remain leads us to the mental health issues. The depression and the anxiety. The drug use and the suicide. The school dropout. We ask why our LGBTQ students are not in school. But who want to go to school where the teacher don't like you? Can you imagine sitting in class all day and they know the teacher don't like you? I am, I am a teacher. I have lectured in classroom where the student don't want the gay man to teach. I have had that. I have had that at Seneca. Oh, I can say it. It's my story. It's my story. You can't tell me not to share my story. It, oh, it's my story. Sorry. You can't. Listen, don't play with me. It's my story. Right in Seneca. Let me fix my berry a minute, people. Right in Seneca, right there. Right in... Se oh, yeah, I have to fix my berry. Right in Seneca, right there. Student who complained constantly. Complained constantly about my teaching. Only to find out she just thought that I was, a, was gay and I had no right being her teacher. So silence leads to all of this. Push people to the edge. You know, no, we're in Canada. And we can celebrate pride and we can do all that kind of stuff. But I can give you the story. 2008 when I came to Canada, I remember vividly my first pride. 2008 June. 
When I showed up at Pride, I was so excited, but I was nervous. And I dressed up nice, and I saw everybody, and I was in the shadows. I didn't dance, I didn't do much. I wanted to see people, and I go, wow. And every minute something said to me, you know, Andrew, you're free. <laughs> you're free, you're in Canada, you're free to do, you, can, you could enjoy it. But I was scared. And so every year when I go to Pride, every year I go to Pride, I look around and I can see the persons who are there. This is their first Pride. And I try to give them a hug and pull them in to let them know you're okay. You can do have to be so silent anymore. You can break the silence. On the screen, you see that. What I love about that picture, it was last week. I think it was a week ago, some of you, maybe two weeks ago, the Break the Silence campaign in, in America in the school, GLSEN, and all the persons breaking the silence. And we saw the pictures of different people breaking the silence, non-binary people breaking the silence, you know, gay and lesbian and Muslim and Christian. And then we see, we see the power of allyship. Many of you are listening to me. You are, you are not 2SLGBTQ. You are an ally. And I want you to understand the work that goes into being an ally. Allies that are, and being an ally is not just a tie to you where, like you said, oh, I am this, I'm a nurse, I'm a doctor, I'm this. Right? You have to put effort into that. Put effort into that, right? We need you. We need allies. And I had to bring that up. So let's get into how we're going to break the silence. So now I've talked to you about the silence. And I've talked to you about the pain of the silence. I talked to you about who, who benefit from the silence, the hurt of the silence. And let's get into breaking the silence. So on your screen there is the part of the theme, the part of the, the overview that I want to address. The first part it says we wandered most of our lives with the stigma of feeling ashamed of who we are. And the word wonder is there. The word wonder is there. It means to stray, to struggle, to go without direction. Sometimes we wonder why our LGBTQ young people have so many issues and we have to you know, put so many services that we keep on to ask the government for more services and people will wonder why we need services because this is it, because they are many of our young people, our older people, we are wandering, wandering. We're rolling stones, can't gather. What an opportunity to be steadfast, to be strong, to be, to be able to gather. Can you imagine? I want all of us as LGBTQ persons to think about your life. If you had the opportunity to gather from you were young, where would you be today? Some of you would be financially amazing. And I say that without fear of contradiction. Because some of you have left from job to jobs and you have gone from school to school and you have dropped out of this and you have started this. No, sometimes no fault of your own. No fault of your own. Because as Brenda says, it's, it's, yes, you have that thing to pull on the inside, but this, the support outside is not there. And the force that come against you. We have to be honest about the force. You know, I, I, I describe myself as being a brave person. But I want to tell you, a part of that bravery is that I have learned how to cry. I have learned how to cry. I have learned, and I've learned where to take my tears and where to take my fears. And that's why I'm so brave. I am not brave because I'm like, like, like Superman brave or Spider-Man brave. I am human brave. Which means when I finish a talk like this, I know how to, 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 to take myself to a place where I can restore and, 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 and heal and, and fix back myself because it takes energy to speak and it takes energy to speak your story. And so I want you to tell you, bravery is a process. So when you cry, don't feel like you're not brave because I feel like there are persons who are listening who feel like I cry, so I'm not brave. Yes, you are because you are here today. You are right here in the Zoom with us. You are right here in the Facebook with us. You are present. Continue to be brave. Continue to use the little tools. So let's get into it. How do we, how do we break the silence? So I'm going to take the first piece from the theme. Tell our stories. I love this picture. Anybody saw it? Know this picture? These are the winners. These are the winners for 2009 Amazing Race Canada. Two-spirited men. Two-spirited, sorry, two-spirited people. And I had the privilege of being invited. 
the honor of being invited to a First Nations Indigenous uh, retreat. I came as a guest and I cannot tell you how much, how much I learned. And I sat at the front and I listened to these two individuals speak about their story. They told their stories. The one who is a doctor, he told a story about being, a, being on the ward and people looking at him not even think he's a doctor. What's new, eh? What's new? But keep on telling your stories. And right, what I like about this, because I'm not going to tell his story, their, their story, don't you worry. What I liked about this was that right there in that space, I looked around at all the young 2SLGBTQ people in the room listening to their own indigenous superstar tell their stories. That's why you have to tell your story. That's why I tell my story. My life has to have meaning more than just for me. Your life has to have meaning more than just for you. Sometimes you wonder why you're so miserable because the only thing you live is for yourself. And you're already full. Sometimes you wonder why you're so miserable because you live for yourself and you are full. And when you are full and you don't pour into anybody else, all you do, you either become stagnant, you either become a, a constant overflow, or you become, I don't even know what else. I think stagnant and overflow is the two things I want to say. So you have to pour out. Tell your story. Tell your story. And their story inspired me. The next one is claim space. Claim space. Claim space. Show up. You know, we always talk about a seat at the table. And a lot of us feel like, give me a minute. A lot of us feel like if we get a seat at the table, nothing will happen anyhow. That's not true. Go at the table. Pull your chair. Take the seat at the table. Claim space. Show up as yourself. Sometimes claiming space don't need to do need to be anything except you show up. Because they're thinking, oh, I don't think Angie's gonna come. And then you show up. You just show up. You just you just show up. I have a I, I have gone to spaces where I know they don't want me to turn up. They don't want me to turn up. I know that. I have gone to spaces and I know they don't want me to be there. You know what I do? I show up. I just show up cute. I show up very cute and I just stand there. Sometimes claiming space don't need to do nothing else than just show up. Show up as your authentic self. Show up as who you are. Show up with your head wrap. Show up with your big beautiful hair joy. Ah. Show up in your kente fabric. Show up in your color. Show up with your hijab. Show up in your wrap and your sari. Show up in your LGBT colors. Show up with your bald head. Show up with your, just show up. Sometimes that's all you need to do is just show up. One of my biggest claiming space moment came a couple of years ago. I tell you this story. I plan to wear my first ever pumps in public. I bought a pair of pumps and I wanted to wear them because I could walk in a six inch pumps and I want to give I want to give pride my best life. And I was going to take the subway. And I drove to the, I was living in North York. I drove, put my pumps on. You're going to see a picture of it in a minute. And I drove to the Finn station. I drove to the Finn station. And I know if I jump on the subway, you know, people look at me, whatever. And when I reach to the village, which I hear being, you know, it's disappearing little by little. That's a different story. When I re claim space, right? We're talking about claiming space and the village is disappearing little by little. Hello, politics. Hello, leaders. Hello. All right. So I was going and I thought about it. You know what? I, 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 I calculated me going on the subway, walking on Church Street. I calculated that. What I didn't calculate was how far I had to park to get to the subway entrance in Finch Station. Way at about, maybe about 600 meters that far. Walking in my six inch heel. And let me tell you something. That walk. From the car to the subway was one of the most powerful moments for me. Because people were looking at me non-stop. And oh, I was walking. 
Oh, I was walking. And I started to walk a little bit calm. Then I started to walk a little bit better. Then I started to walk a little bit more timid. And people look at me shocked. People look at me smile. People look at me in disgust. And after a while, the wind caught me in my energy. And I just started to give you Beyonce walk. And I walked all the way to the subway. You have to claim space, people. You have to claim space. The next one is establish your voice. Maya Angelou said, if we are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. I know I'm amazing today. I'm not boasting. For those of you who want to be offended, that's your business. It's, it's Friday. Go and have a drink afterwards. You know, I'm not boasting. I am telling you, I, Andrew Campbell, have come up on the rough side of the mountain. I am amazing and I know that I've worked at being amazing and I'm not going to allow you to un to make me unamazing. I don't know if there's a word like that. Maybe there's a word. Whatever. I, I make it. I'm not going to make you make me unamazing. And that's why some of you, you, you people have to understand when people push hard at you, you have to learn to establish your voice. Speak your truth. When you go on the committee, write your songs. Write your poems. Thank you, Brenda. Sing your songs. There are many ways to speak up. You don't have to be the keynote. Some of you feel like I can't speak up because I am not Yoshi. I am not Allegra. I don't have the voice like Rosalind. I can't speak like Dr. ABC. Yes, you have your voice. You're a songwriter. Write a song. You're a poet. Write a poem. You're an artist. Draw a piece of art. Peace. That when I see it, I just think, wow, wow. Speak up. Many ways. Ensure you are heard. Ensure you are heard. Sit on the committee. Write the resistance letters. March. Do your thing. Ensure you are heard. That picture of Black Lives Matter movement in Toronto when they blocked the pride. Very controversial for everybody. But today we realize the need and the benefit that came from that. Somebody has to ensure we are heard. And the next one is tell your truths. Our stories. You know, bell hooks. She says, sometimes people try to destroy you precisely because they recognize your power. Not because they don't see it, but because they see it and they don't want it to exist. I realize I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more when I walk into a room and people see me coming. Sometimes it's not that they don't like me because they like me. It's just that they are also aware that I am powerful. I'm a, they're aware that when they start to talk foolishness, I'm going to raise my hand because I have a wheel. You know, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a student. And I teach my, my students in the middle of my lecture, raise your hand. If you go to OISE, if you go to any TDSB, they'll tell you in the middle of my lecture, I said, if you have a question, stop me. Stop me. And I've, and I've taken on, on that habit myself. So I would raise my hand in a staff meeting. I would raise my hand in a staff room. I'll raise my hand in a, in a meeting and I'll ask a question. And I want to say this right now. There are times I have raised my hand in 2020, two times. I'm going to talk about that in a, in a, in a, I'm going to be on a panel for Oise, um in the end of this month. And I'm going to make sure I, 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 I say that. Twice in, 2000, in 2020, my voice trembled. When I raised my hand and I had to speak. So we still have issues, right? We're still struggling. We're still pushing. So that slide you see there is from the Jamaica News. I want to show you what, what it looks like. Some of us, we are so privileged. In a, in, some of us, we enjoy certain privilege in a Canadian space. And we don't see a headline. These are news headlines in our, in, our, in, our, in our newspaper in Jamaica. Because these are the people who are telling our stories. Okay? So I'm going to close on this one. These are the people who are telling our stories, right? When they tell our stories, this is what it looks like. When they tell our stories, we are seen as less than and we are in need of constant mending. When they tell our stories, we die in the end with HIV. We always die with HIV when they tell our stories. When they tell our stories, we live with regret. That we have never been married, we, don't, we never had a husband or we never had a wife or we never had children, a dog and a cat, a big house with a white picket fence. When they tell our stories, that's what they put on us. So we live in regret. People have looked at me and they think I am so happy, but Andrew, I think you're missing something. I don't think you're truly happy because you've never been married, you don't have children. Because they're trying to tell my story for me. When we tell our stories, our families are perfect. 
and we are the only faulty one. When they tell our stories, we are yearning and we are abnormal. When they tell our stories, we are seen as clowns and freaks and a sideshow. When they tell our stories, our father didn't love us. When they tell our stories, our mothers are weak. But when we tell our stories, when we tell our stories, we can be our own kind of beautiful. When we tell our stories, we are worthy. When we tell our stories, we are whole and we are mended. When we tell our stories, we are kind and loving and forgiving. When we tell our stories, we have worked hard and we have become. When we tell our stories, we are educated and we are qualified. We are fabulous and we are freaking amazing. When we tell our stories, we are ballroom dancers, we are singers, we are artists, we are poets, we are drag queens. When we tell our stories, we got the crown, we play second, we got consolation prizes. When we tell our stories, we are somebody's son and we are somebody's brother and we are somebody's uncle and grandson. We are somebody's best friend. When we tell our stories, we are a teacher, we are authors, we are motivational speakers, we are researchers, we are assistant professors. Excuse me. We are, when we tell our stories, we are admired, we are desired, we are dressmakers, we are stylists, we are, we are nail technicians, we are designers. When we tell our stories, we are bigger than self. When we tell our stories, we have hope and we have inspiration and we give possibilities. When we tell our stories, we are in love. When we tell our stories, we are bold. I hope, I, I wish you on Facebook could see the slides I'm showing right now. It would melt your heart. When we tell our stories, we are stars and we are movie stars and we are married and we have kids and we have husbands and we have wives and we have non-binary partners who love us. When we tell our stories, we wear hijabs and we are fabulous. And we tell our stories, we have our families. And that's me. And that's me at the bottom there. When we tell our stories, the, oh yes, that is Dr. ABC. In my palms, six inches, with six foot four, six inch four legs and six inch palms. It was a giant. And I can't wait to do it again. As soon as we can go to the street and wear my pumps. I promise I want to wear my pump to the supermarket. I have kind of been planning that. I shouldn't tell you all, but I've been planning I want to wear my ears to the supermarket on just a regular day. I want to show up in a very fabulous moment. So, tell our stories, people. Tell your stories. 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 Because we belong. When we tell our stories, we break the silence. Tell your stories. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for giving me space to, to be, to speak, to be honest, to be brave, to be authentic. Thank you for giving me space to breathe. Thank you. 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 I don't even... I need a minute. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you so, 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 so much from the deepest thank you. Deep depths of my being. Thank you, Dr. Campbell. This was incredible. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the chat comments, but they're blowing up. So many, so many wonderful messages of thanks and just the impact that you've had on people today, being vulnerable, inspiring them, empowering us to just be ourselves, be loud, show up. So I'm getting, I'm getting in my feelings a little bit, but honestly, this was incredible. Thank you so Thank you, much. thank you, thank you. I have any other words today, but just we we all needed this, honestly. I can... I can say that for myself at least, but in the comment based on what I'm seeing in the comments, this came right on time for a lot of us. So yes. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I have never had the ability to see you speak before and this just blew me away. Um I I am so thankful that uh we were able to have you speak today. My pleasure, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. That was amazing. Uh, Dr. ABC, where can folks find you? I'm, I'm sure we can't get enough. Yes, thank you so much for that. And I was, I, we, we, I, I'm Allegra, we're not going to have questions, right? Because I think the fat chat box is done enough. And Well, um, you know, we uh, we do want to recognize we are running a little bit behind. Right, so let's not do that. I think, that's, that, I think I've given them 
enough meat for the day and I think people <laughs> will get pieces from that but I wanted to answer you joy because it's very important so I have news to share that take f like, literally 30 seconds so where can you find me I my website is going live next week but right now write it down everybody write down my website can you imagine it's drabc.ca I am over the moon I am over the moon I couldn't believe I got that domain it's dr dr abc.ca and I just want to special specifically say when you go there it's going to be open next week but as we speak right now you can send me a message there so if you want to get in contact with me if you go to the website now you can actually use the message and send me a message there and we can communicate back and forth and the website goes live next week and I just want to say specifically I offer these kind of talks workshops for LGBTQ but something I'm offering that, that I think a lot of person would love to know is that I'm offering lifestyle coaching and I'm very very big on and I and, I, and my focus is motivational talk and support to pull people into my space one-on-one -on -one. this is one-on-one -on -one also to for any discussion so we could talk about how do we Standing at a crossroads. Many of our people are standing at crossroads. How do you continue moving? And I have some tools that I can share with you all to continue moving. Tools that have worked for me and tools that I have gathered. So find me at my Facebook, also Andrew B. Campbell. Also at Instagram, at, teach, at Teachable Moment with Dr. ABC. But also at my website. Once you go to the website, you'll see all the other stuff. So that's easy. DrABC.ca. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to unshare my stop share my screen and so i can enjoy the rest of the day thank you so much everyone amazing thank you so much be sure to follow dr campbell on all his socials hit up that website it's launching next week you can get on there and get all the good we'll see preview that was amazing